Horses Buck for a Reason, as written and read by Missy Wren, Holistic Horsemanship Trainer, training the whole horse for a safer ride. A horse came into my barn for training that the owner said, my horse bucks for no reason. I'm here to tell you a horse doesn't buck for no reason. By the time this horse came to me, he was shouting in the only way he knew how, to buck. He was a six-year-old quarter horse named Hero who had been team penning and trail riding, but bucked his owner off, Angela, her friend, and had now become completely unruly and dangerous. In the hopes of getting Hero back under control, Angela sent him to a natural horsemanship trainer with promises made that he could fix Hero and get him trained well in 30 days. After three weeks with the trainer, he told Angela, you need to sell this horse, he's worthless. The comment took Angela's breath away. Devastated and heartbroken, she had to face the decision of trying to sell him or possibly have him euthanize since he was so dangerous. Who would want to buy him, she wondered. Angela phoned me one afternoon, explaining she had seen an ad that I specialize in problem and dangerous horses. She explained that she no longer believed natural horsemanship could be of any help after her experience with the previous trainer, but I convinced her to give me an opportunity to work with Hero since I believed there was a source to Hero's behavior and we simply need to identify and treat the source. Angela agreed to 30 days with Hero at my training center and weekly lessons for herself to learn herd leadership and holistic horsemanship techniques. The horse arrived frightened, freaked out, and completely soaked in sweat and trembling. It had been six months since his experience with the other trainer, so he was pretty fresh off the pasture and wild-eyed. Within the first 24 hours, I did a holistic joining to establish my leadership so he would settle down and know he was within a herd that had a competent herd leader, me. Horses genetically require a herd leader at all times, no matter the size of the herd and especially in a herd of two, you and your horse. Without a herd leader, horses continue to be stressed and can act dangerous and reckless, harming themselves and anyone in their way. Once Hero recognized me as the leader, I was able to assess physical and emotional well-being as well as his training knowledge, who he is, what he knows, and how he does it. I learned he could back up, move forward and stop, drop his head, and lunge fairly well. Since Angela told me that he bucks for no reason, I checked his body for pain and soreness. Sure enough, at the withers, on the right side, he ducked and muscles quivered under my thumb pressure of only a couple pounds. I further noted that his right and left hip and sacrum area were pretty sore too. I contacted Angela and explained that I would not ride Hero until he is seen by my equine chiropractor who was scheduled for a visit the following week. So while awaiting the chiropractic appointment, I worked with Hero on ground manners using bonding, compassion, and gentling methods allowing him to come up with the correct answer without using fear or pain. During that week, I built a trusting companionship with Hero as he learned that I was a kind and consistent leader he could trust and like to be with. The following week, the chiropractor arrived and met the now lovely but concerned Hero who is this and is he taking me away? Is he going to hurt me? All these thoughts you could see running through his mind at warp speed. The chiropractor veterinarian offered his hands to Hero's muzzle, filling his nostrils with the scent of lavender, helping him to relax and giving Hero a first good impression. The dog started at the head, feeling in the pole and atlas area along with the TMJ. He reached around and pulled Hero's head to his side, giving him a hug and pop! The dock let go and Hero stood there. What just happened? Oh, I feel good, as he licked his lips. The dock made a couple more moves on his head with his fist in his neck and pulling on the halter. Bang, went C5 and C6, cervical five and cervical six. We stood back and waited, and then Hero took a deep breath and a long sigh, blowing out his nostrils and licking his lips. Now to the shoulders, the doc gently picked up the right leg and whoa, Hero came off the ground with both feet explosively. The doc got out of the way and exclaimed, man, is he really hurting. He gently lifted the leg and again, Hero came off the ground, but the doc was prepared, holding him in the adjustment position and boom, went the shoulder. We stood back, waiting for the lick and chew, but nothing happened. The doc and I looked at each other. We both heard it but still nothing. So he picked up the leg again and tried a different position, but again nothing. 
He tried another position, yet again nothing. We knew he got it, but something else was in the way of the full release of pain. The dog stuck his fists low in Hero's neck and pulled on the halter and pop went T1 and went the horse through his nostrils with a full body shake while dropping his head, licking and chewing. He got it. T1 was holding up the progress. The dog palpated the area and no signs of pain, no quivering skin or ducking under pressure. He completed the horse's adjustments with hip and sacrum, tail and whorl bone, along with both floating ribs. By the time he was done, Hero was completely relaxed. I hardly recognized him with joy and softness in his eyes. After two days off due to Hero's adjustments, he was ready to resume training. By the end of the week, I was riding Hero without incident. We danced around the arena over poles and tarps, trotting and cantering with delight. By addressing Hero's pain, I now had his full attention and focus along with his undying loyalty and companionship. Consider the whole horse before you reprimand or start training the behavior. Think about acting within your horse instead of acting upon your horse. Simply training the behavior is allopathic training, which means you are only treating the symptom, training the behavior, not addressing the source or the reason for the behavior. There are reasons your horse acts the way he does. Think about your horse may have been telling you something was wrong long before he started shouting with hurtful or dangerous behavior. Remember, problems are not always training issues. Horses Buck for a Reason is a Do No Harm production written and narrated by Missy Wren. For horse training equipment and tack, shop securely online at missyrin.com. If you have a question for me, email info at missyrin.com or call toll-free 888 406-7689.